It's time to take your plane bending into the world of anti-spin. Does it sound like I just put together a Flow Arts Mad Lib? Well, you're not actually that far off, but I swear this is actually a thing, and we call them anti-bend toroids. Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And in this video, I'm gonna outline the techniques for learning this very cool but forgotten corner of the tech poise world. Before we dive in though, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecha, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Becca Bekunen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. Things that I have learned in the past couple months. Y'all really like your toroids, like a lot. I've done two videos on them and y'all keep asking me for more. And hey, your wish is my command. A couple months ago, we took a look at isobend toroids. So this month, I'm going to break down for you how to perform anti-bend toroids. If you're new here, please show the channel some love and subscribe. I post regular tutorials on poise spinning, flow arts, and flow culture. So be sure you know when I upload a new video. So to start, let's quickly recap what toroids are so we can have some context for our anti-bends. Toroids are an exotic corner of the tech poi world wherein we attempt to move the plane the prop is spinning in just like we would the prop itself, most often presenting the plane of the poi in profile to the viewer like a straight line and bending between neighboring planes. The classic example of this is to imagine the plane of the poi as being like a hula hoop. That hula hoop can move through a path that looks a bit like a donut and we can spin that hoop various ways within the donut. If we spin the hoop in the same direction the hand is moving and complete a beat at the same time, time. What we're creating is an isobend. I already did a tutorial on those and if you want to catch up I'll leave a link to it down in the description, but you can also spin the plane in the opposite direction that the hand is moving in. If that hoop were instead flattened down to a staff, we would call this motion anti-spin and hence it's referred to here as anti-bend instead. And a strange property of anti-bend toroids is that they result in the poi always spinning and bending along the outside edge of the donut. So how exactly do we create an anti-bend? Well, it's going to require both some theory and some practice, and we're going to have to talk about the difference between beats of the plane and beats of the poi. Let's say for the sake of argument that I'm going to perform what would be considered a four-pedal staff anti-spin with the plane of the poi. This will involve flipping the plane to switch which side of it faces the center of the donut four times. Easy enough to visualize. But how many times are we going to have the poi spin through the course of this? How many beats will the poi itself complete? As the plane is moving, we can add or subtract beats to our heart's content, but a lot of versions of this idea wind up looking pretty messy. In most cases, we tend to pick one of two options for beats of the plane versus beats of the poi. Either we do twice as many beats with the poi, so it spins twice for each time the poi plane flips, or we perform an equal number of poi and plane beats. Here's what each of those look like. A common way to do four pedal anti-bend toroids is to perform an additional beat at each of the four compass points. I usually refer to these as grace beats because they give the person performing them an opportunity to stabilize the poi planes before bending them again. But in three pedal anti-bend toroids, it's way more common to perform only one beat of the poi for each bend of the plane, resulting in shapes that look like the outlines of polygons. By and large, four plane bends is the threshold at which switching between these orientations starts to make sense. At greater than four bends, the degree to which the plane has to bend each time makes it more and more helpful to take a pause at each point to stabilize the poi. At less than four bends, adding the grace beat starts to look a little sloppy and redundant. As for four bends themselves, I most often do this with grace beats, but it's certainly possible, albeit challenging, to do it without. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so with all that said, let's actually run through how to perform those two examples and get some anti-bend toroids under your belt starting with the four pedal anti-bend. Just like when we were learning the iso bend, we'll start with the poise spinning forward and buzzsaw plane along our center line down near our hips. As the poise spins down away from the center, you'll bend the poise slightly off to your right, and as it swings out away from you, you'll then bring it back into horizontal plane. 
spinning it clockwise if you were looking up at it from below. Did you notice that something kind of strange happened there? If you've done my isobend tutorial, you'll know that one of the ways you orient yourself with isobend toroids is that the poi will always be swinging either away or toward you through the middle of the toroid. I refer to the difference as being outies versus innies. But when we perform one of these bends in an anti-bend toroid, we've switched the movement of the poi from an outie to an innie. That will happen every time we move to a different position in anti-bend. Cool, so now let's try to bend from our right side up to the top. As we spin our poi in horizontal plane, we wait until the poi spins out away from us and we bend it up onto a diagonal away from us before letting it drop back into buzzsaw plane at eye level spinning reverse. If we look at this from the front, you'll note that as I'm performing this bend, I'm keeping my hand just behind the plane of the poi, so the poi is moving just before my hand between these two positions. So we go from my hand being under the horizontal plane to it being just to the right of the high buzzsaw plane. So to recap, we started with an outie, bent it to an innie, and then bent it back to an outie. The top and bottom will be the same orientation and the sides will be the opposite orientation. But just know that in anti-bend, the opposing sides will always match. Cool, now let's bend off to the left. We once again wait until the poi is spinning away from the center of the donut, and as it begins spinning towards us, we bend off to the side. When it spins back out away from us, it should arrive in a horizontal plane spinning counterclockwise if viewed from above. Just like with our last bend, I'm keeping my hand just behind the plane of the poi, going from having my hand to the right of the buzzsaw plane to having it hovering above the horizontal plane. So again, we've arrived at an innie from an outie, and the left side matches the right side. Our final bend is going to require us to bend the poi from the moment it's pointed out away from the center, and as it spins out away from us, we bend the plane downward, and as it swings back toward us, we pull it into buzzsaw plane spinning forward at our hips, back to where we started. For this last bend, I'm going to skip my hand ahead of the poi plane at the bottom. In buzzsaw planes, I like having my hand on its native side, even though it breaks the pattern of the rest of the anti-bend flower. So now that we have all these individual bends down, we can practice moving continuously between them. To start, maybe perform three grace beats at each compass point and then bend to the next one. Then work your way down to just two grace beats, and then finally down to just one in each spot. If you want, you can take the grace beats out entirely. It's challenging but not impossible, and what you'll find is that you're spinning the poi for about half a beat on each diagonal as you go around. Now, one thing that's really important to point out is that the fact that we arrive back where we start with the poi spinning in the same direction is mathematically dependent on there being an even number of beats. So what happens when there's an odd number of beats? The pattern switches direction every time you perform it. It's a total trip. And that's our cue to take a look at the three beat toroid, or as it's sometimes called, the toroid triangle. Now, this is going to require much different thinking to get through. Instead of thinking of buzzsaw planes and four compass points, we're going to have to adjust our thinking to visualizing something more like a weave with three points to it. Start by performing a two beat or tic tac in front of you and point it upward towards the sky. Notice how the shape of it has changed relative to the audience from looking like a figure eight to looking like an upside down U or V. As the poi comes down on your left hand side, I want you to let it swing inward towards your stomach and switch into a horizontal plane. As you look down at it, the poi will appear to be spinning counterclockwise. Let's see that again from POV. You want to make sure the cross point of the poi in the two beat is directly above your hand rather than straight out in front of you as it would be in a traditional two beat. Again, when it hits the bottom of the left side, pull it inward toward your stomach and bend it into a horizontal plane spinning counterclockwise. Now, how do you get back to those more vertical planes? Hang out here for as many beats as you need, and then watch that point where the poi swings over to your right. When that happens, pull your hand up and bring the poi plane more vertical and once again into a two beat or tic tac. It should now feel like that tic tac is going reverse instead of forwards. The direction of the pattern has changed. Make sure to keep your hand close to body center as you're performing this bend. The poi should come up just past the hand to the right, so it has room to go back and forth across each side of the hand. Also, we should return it to a spot where the cross point of the two beat is pointed up. Cool! Now, how do we get back to where we started? 
just like we did when this two beat felt like it was going forward, wait until the poi is coming down over at your left side, but this time swing it out away from you into a horizontal plane. It should appear to be spinning clockwise as you look down on it from above. For reasons I'm still not clear on, I feel like my planes tend to bow out more on this reverse two beat. Keep an eye on this as you make the switch and try to keep the planes more or less straight to really nail that triangle shape. And now, onto our last step. Hang out here in horizontal plane for a few beats, and then when the poise swings over to your right side, pull it upward with your hand into a more vertical plane, and you should arrive back at where you started, doing a forward tic-tac pointed up towards the ceiling or sky. Here that is again from the front. Again, have some care with getting back into those vertical planes, and make sure to keep them looking straight to preserve the image of the triangle. I know, it's totally weird, but it'll make sense with repetition and practice, I promise. Start out by doing three forward tic-tacs before bending into a counterclockwise horizontal plane, performing three beats, and then bending into three reverse tic-tacs, and bending into a clockwise horizontal plane for three beats. Then, do two forward tic-tacs into two beats horizontal counterclockwise, two reverse tic-tacs into two beats horizontal clockwise. Then, just do one rep of each and you should arrive at a point where you're seamlessly bending around the full triangle. I know it feels super weird, but these patterns look super cool when you do long exposure photography or trails video with them. You get something that we rarely get with poi otherwise. Straight lines and pretty clear shapes. The more you practice, the cleaner and more defined you can get them. And if you're looking for one more challenge to noodle your noggin, one of my favorite uses of toroid triangles is actually to perform them in a hybrid with the other hand performing a triquetra. This results in a triangle juxtaposed against something that looks triangular but is built out of curves. Very neat effect. And of course, my favorite use for anti-bends is to perform a pentagram using these techniques. Doing this with anti-spin looks cool enough, but the pentagram isn't super clearly defined. With anti-bends on the other hand, the shape reads loud and clear. Long exposure photographs of this make for great Christmas cards. As with iso-bends, practice these in all timing and direction modes to unlock freedom of movement with them. See what cool things come out of that. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible if not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for all of your very, very generous support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I am on a mission to try and bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out, please, and thank you. Want to check out some of my other videos on toroids? I'll leave a link to a playlist of videos I've done on the topic down in the description as well as up on screen if you are watching on YouTube. The YouTube algorithm also thinks that you'll like this top video based upon your past viewing habits, so maybe give that a look too. Make sure to get out and flow today and I'll see you with a brand new video on Monday. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Peace.